okay, thank you so much good. for joining this uh, short talk. Um, I'm honored to to be here, and hopefully, um, this series of conferences will help um, help our friends in in Puerto Rico. Um, the topic that I wanted to to talk about was uh, global citizenship education, and this is a trend now in in education to teach our students not only about the conflicts and the possible solutions that we can create for our local environments, but also to acknowledge that, that we are part of a global community of citizens and that somehow we affect each other. Thank you for, for listening, Belen. Um, and if I ask you to think of the things that you are surrounded with in this very moment, you are surrounded by a phone that might had been made in China and if I ask you to uh, take a look at your shoes or your backpack, your laptop, maybe your kitchen, you will find um, a lot of instruments, a lot of objects that were created somewhere beyond your country. That means that we are no longer part of a very small community. We are part of a broader community and a broader uh, group of social group, which is humanity. And that's what global citizenship education aims to. It aims to teach our students to visualize, to see, to acknowledge, to recognize that our actions can influence so much um, other people in countries so far away. One of the examples that I can think of uh, is the, was the recently fires from Australia. Um, if, you read, if you read the news, um, it was amazing. It was so interesting how how that affected also the weather, for instance, in Chile. I mean, all the smog, all the all the um, the smoke, yeah, the smoke coming from the from the fires reached South America, and the weather in Chile and in Argentina was affected, and the health of the people there. So, if we go to the next slide, um, if, or or I can uh, I can do it, right? Can I do it? Okay, so yeah, global citizenship education um, can be taught by helping students to participate in group in projects that address global issues. If you are teaching English or you are teaching history or math, um, the idea is that you can incorporate within your teaching something that makes them think of the connection uh, that they can establish with the world. Um, if I think of uh, I don't know maybe history or, or social studies or English. I can think of a project in which I involve the development of a solution for a global situation. Let's say that we can uh, try to, we're practicing public speaking. Um, we are practicing um, how to deliver a presentation. Maybe the context of that presentation can be a UN presentation about uh, the climate crisis or about the uh, political crisis that has been um, around Middle East for so many years. So the idea is practice maybe the same skills and not to change the, the curriculum of your classes, but try to incorporate within the classes some projects that talk about global issues. And um, I wanted to introduce you to four uh, basic and essential skills that should be developed and should be taught and learned in order for us to be able to develop global citizens. All right, so we have the traditional role of the teacher and we have also the more up-to-date role of the facilitator. You can take a screenshot of that. You can take a picture and, and maybe um, review it more closely when you are on your own. But I want to, to talk about four main abilities or skills that is so important for us to develop in our students so that they can become global citizens. And the first one is cooperation. Um, in the beginning of my talk, this sounds a little bit abstract, like global citizenship, how I reach that and how I develop the skills on my students to reach uh, a high level of competence in this life skill. And one of them is cooperation. Um, cooperation can be developed by having students working towards the same end. Instead of competing uh, among groups or competing individually, trying to create activities or projects in which people have to all cooperate so that they can achieve a goal in common. So that's one of the, of the skills. And, and honestly, to me, this is one of the most important. 
And uh, Rob, a few seconds ago, ago, talked about the butterfly effect. Yes, all of our actions in here can affect people uh, thousands of miles away. The second um, skill, I apologize for the typo there, it's problem solving. Um, problem solving sounds sometimes very abstract as well, but it has at least five stages. And again, you can try to think of how, to, how you teach the same subject or the same topic, but including an activity in which your students can solve uh, a specific situation by following five steps. So the first step is defining the problem. You cannot hit a target that you can't see. So you have to define the problem and uh, you should focus a lot of your attention on how you define the problem because the way you define the problem will influence a lot on how you define the solution or how you create a solution. Then you determine as a second stage, the causes of the problems. Um, this is very interesting because so many minds thinking of one single subject give you a lot of ideas. Then you identify and prioritize what are the steps that you have to follow in order to uh, address the root causes of the problem. As the fourth step, step um, you, you have always uh, keep in mind that there is no, not only one way to do things. There are many ways of doing one thing. Have you seen this image around the, around the social media? Um, giving you an example of nine, I mean, five plus four is nine and so that, so as well as six plus three and so on. So yeah, you have to give your students a chance to experiment and propose different alternatives. And finally, implementing the solution. So this is the second skill that I consider is quite, quite important in order for us to develop um, social, um, global citizenship in our students. This one is very, very important. Um, you can see the rise of uh, mental diseases around the globe. This is undeniable. Uh, levels of stress and, and people diagnosed with stress, anxiety, and even more students. Um, and every day they start from a little age, from a younger age. So handling disappointment is a very important life skill that, that ha has to be built in our students for them to achieve global citizenship. Because this life skill tells us that no matter how difficult things are, we should always have a positive look at things. We should, we should try to keep a positive look at things. And um, the most important thing to, to develop this life skill is to, tell, to, 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 to help them acknowledge first how they feel about the situation. So many times we struggle to define our feelings and we rather be quiet instead of acknowledging that we feel um, in, we feel bad or we feel de depressed, we feel sad about it. We sometimes and our students learn to just be quiet about it until the situation just doesn't hurt anymore. But sometimes that doesn't hurt never arrives and you just move that back to your subconscious mind. So we have to teach our students to handle disappointment. And that can be taught from the very beginning they don't get the results they expected in a test or in, in an evaluation, for instance. We can sit down with them and ask them just this simple question. How do you feel about this? Mm, honestly, I feel this way. So the first, um, the first step is just acknowledging how you feel. And from that on, it's, it's quite simple. Um, you have to reflect on your expectations. You have to sit down and try to think of what you learned from the experience that you lived. Um, maybe it would be use useful to make a personal inventory of who you are in that moment and what you have. And therefore, um, things that you can do to improve. And if nothing of this makes you feel better, one of the key aspects to handle disappointment is to modify your expectations. We don't want to teach, of course, mediocr mediocrity, um, but we have to teach students that sometimes life doesn't give us what we, what we expect. So if that doesn't happen, we should um, modify our, our expectations. And the last one is positive thinking. I love this one. I, I love positive thinking because it's so amazing how the way we think influences reality. And it's not that idea of mystical manipulation of matter with your thoughts. 
is the idea that when you think of something, your brain processes that information and focuses even more on that and focuses on the things around the topic that you're thinking about. So if you focus on solution, psychology tells you that you will find solutions. And if you focus on problems, psychology will tell you that you will find more problems. So positive thinking is the, the ability of having a mental and emotional attitude, positive one, expecting that everything is gonna be okay in the end. It doesn't matter how hard things can be, there is always something good within a bad day. Maybe you don't have, you didn't have a good day, but there's always something good within that day. Why is this so useful for global citizenship education? Because if you don't believe that things can improve, if you don't believe that things can change, things won't change. And our students have to know that. They are growing in an environment probably quite hostile and uh, very savage with our environment and uh, very complicated and loaded with tons of stress. But they have to keep up the mental attitude that things can improve. If you don't think that things can improve, unfortunately, things won't. And um, there are so many life skills that should be taught for us to achieve global citizenship education. And these ones are so simple. Just positive thinking, essential. Um, the ability to cooperate with others, so, so simple also. The ability to handle disappointment, and the ability, the ability to define the problem and work towards a solution. Finally, um, I, I really sympathize with this philosophy and this amazing woman who once uh, said that children must be taught how to think and not what to think. That's the premise of global citizenship education. We have to teach the skills so that they can know how to think properly and work through solutions and through problems that they should they should they shouldn't be taught just what to think knowledge is important but the ability to think will improve our ability to gain and use that knowledge that's it for for my presentation i hope i didn't make uh, it too long 